We're all familiar with small pocket calculators like this one, but back in the day they used to be mechanical. Here's a 1957 mechanical calculator from the company Facet. We're going to have a look at what's inside of this calculator and how to operate it. I'll show you the main parts to this calculator. This set of numbers here is called the accumulator, this one is called the counter, and this one here is called the setting register. And you've got these three levers, like this one, and this one, and this one, and that clears the registers. So this lever clears the accumulator. If I push that down, it zeroes it. This one here and this one here, if you squeeze them together, the top one here will, will clear the counting register, or the counter, and this one will clear the setting register, and basically pull it back. So you see, it's, it's almost like a typewriter mechanism where you can type things in, and then sort of pull it back and clear it. The idea is that you can also use these buttons here to move to the tens, hundreds, thousands columns on all the numbers and back again. Or you can just slam it all the way to the side. Uh, and this key is used for when you're doing division and things like that. So I'm just going to pull that back again or we can just do that. So the, the common method went before you start using these calculators is you just push all levers, clear everything, and then you're good to go. The first mechanism to show on this calculator is the accumulation or the counting. So without anything set, with it all cleared and everything on zero, if I turn this handle clockwise, see it counts up one, this is the counter register remember, and as many times as I turn this, it'll just keep accumulating. And I can also go back the other direction. So um, this, this is used, it, it basically does math on this setting or the input register, it then does the counting and then puts your result out here to your, your accumulator. So if I typed in, for example, uh, 12 in the settings, and then I accumulated that once, you can see 12 counted once is 12. And if I go twice, 12 times by two is 24. So I'm basically doing multiplication at this point. Um, you can see 12 by four is 48. So for simple addition, I can add numbers together like this. I can go say uh, 10, and I'll enter that into this register up here clear that, I can go 30, see 10 plus 30 is 40, clear that, I can go uh, 139, you see it keeps adding here, so every time I've got to clear this and then I can basically just type in my numbers like this and if I want to add that number again I can just turn the handle again. So that's simple addition, just adding numbers together and you keep watching here and it'll just update. And this basically just tells you how many times you've cycled it through, you've put a number through to this accumulator. Now if I clear everything, um, if I want to subtract, you can do that by basically turning the handle the opposite direction. So if, say if I start with a thousand, okay, so I want to enter that in. Now if I want to minus five, four, three, Turn the handle back the opposite direction, and you can see our result is here. Uh, and I can go minus 45. There you go. You see this is just rolled over, by the way, um, the counter. But you can see that the correct result is here. Now this is where it gets really powerful with a machine like this. If I do multiplication, say if I want to multiply 1, 2, 3 by 4, 5, 6, I can go 1, 2, 3 enter that in. Now basically at this point this becomes our multiplier. So we multiply 1, 2, 3 once and we got 1, 2, 3. So if I'm doing 4, 5, 6 then I want this last digit here to be 6. So I just turn that to 6. Now I move to the tens column. Remember going 4, 5, 6. So now I need to multiply by 50 like that. And now move once more to the hundreds column. And that's our result. So 1, 2, 3 multiplied by 4, 5, 6 is 56,088. And I can verify that using our handy little calculator here. So if we go 1, 2, 3 times by 4, 5, 6, so you've got the same number there. And so this is like, I mean, it's not very impressive now. It's like, you know, a lot of turning handles and levers and things, but to be able to multiply numbers this large so easily back in the day would have been pretty phenomenal. Um, you know, you can do huge numbers if you want. You can do like 
something crazy like that, enter that in. Let's go times that by five. And you can say, no, you know what, let's times that by 305. And you see this crazy big numbers you can get here. So it very quickly and very effectively does multiplication of that sort, um, which is pretty, pretty powerful back in the day, I suppose. So we're gonna do a division now, and we're gonna take our last result from our multiplication, which was 56,088. We're gonna divide that back again by the one, two, three, and we should get our four, five, six. So basically reversing our multiplication. So this is a little bit different on this machine. I've got to use a few little levers and things, but hopefully I can remember how to do all this and uh, I'll show you how it works. So we're gonna enter our 56,088. Now we need to press this button here for division, which slides everything to the left like that. And then we turn our handle to get our number up here in the accumulator. Now we clear our registers. You see we still got our number up here, but we're ready for another input. So now we're going to divide by 123. Again, we hit this button to fill our division, slide it all the way to the left. And now what we do is we need to turn this handle to do subtractions. We're basically subtracting this number from our other number. Um, and if you look here, you'll see it, it counts how many times we subtract. We do this until we like basically do a loop and we get back to nine again, or you will hear a bell ring. So if we do that now, See it's subtracting over here. We've done it twice. Three, four, hear the bell. So that means we've gone to our limit. We then need to roll forward once more. So it's going back the opposite direction and it resets it to zero and our first digit here is four, if you can see that. Now we move tens and then we repeat the process. So we go anti-clockwise. Till we hear the bell. There it is. And then we go forward one. So four, five. There's our second digit. We go forward again and repeat the process. And then go forward. Four, five, six. And that's it, basically. So if we wanted to, we could keep going and but you know we've basically got zeros here, so it's we're just gonna keep getting zeros all the way all the way along. Um, but there's our result. So uh, 56,088 divided by 123 equals 456. And just for fun, we'll calculate pi on this. It seems like everyone who shows these calculators um, calculates pi or approximation of it. So if we did that, we want to go 355 divided by 113. So we go 355, slide it to our uh, left. I'm going to enter that into the accumulator. Now we want to clear and go one, one, three. Slide that to the left. Now we start doing the reversing maneuver again. So we go backwards, counterclockwise, till we hear the bell. There it is. Go forward one. Move to the next digit. There it is. Move to the next digit. Okay, go back, next digit. You see, I can keep doing this for as many uh, decimal places that I want, but we've got three, one, four, one, five, etc., etc. So you can see that we've approximated pi. So that's how to operate one of these calculators. I mean, I'm sort of clumsy here and I'm taking my time and don't really not really well versed on these things, but that's the basic sort of uh, math for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So next we'll take the lid off and we'll have a look at all the crazy mechanisms inside. So this thing being a big hunk of metal is all cast, it's extremely heavy. I'm just going to show you sort of around the back here, it's got this label on it, it says Sydney Pincomb proprietary limited sole Australian agents. So this is a company back in the 50s or 60s or whenever this was sold. This is actually from 1957, but a, a company here in Australia that sold these. Um, and so they've put their label on there. Uh, I haven't bothered to take that off. I have, I have cleaned this unit up a bit, but it does have some scuffs and scratches. It's, um, you know, just the age of the machine and it's obviously seen use. Now, if I turn this over, 
turn it around. It's going to be difficult, but I'm hoping I can get you to let me get a reflection there. You can see it says um, made by at Vidaberg Facet Sweden, protected by patents in Sweden and other countries, model NTK, and the serial number is 485843. So there's a bunch of screws on the bottom here, but first, from memory, I've taken this thing apart before a while back. I had to take all the handles off before taking the top off, um, so we'll do that now. So these have just got like a nice big flathead screw on them. You can see the whole handle just comes off like that. Move to this side, and it's much the same for these. You can see they've got these sort of um, these spring washer type arrangements just to hold pressure on the thread and um, help stop it from unwinding as you're using the mechanism. in a couple of little bits but that shaft there doesn't seem to want to come out uh, now this one I don't remember if I had to take this one off or not not sure just looking at the side here maybe the top will come off and I didn't actually need to take this one off either we'll see what happens we'll turn it over don't know whether I have to take these ones out or not I'll just take one of them out I have to be very careful because the rubber is original and it's all starting to crack and perish a little bit, so I'm just trying to be gentle. Yeah, I mean, I think that was just literally just holding the foot on. I don't know that that's necessary to remove. I'll just go for these middle ones here. So like a rubber. Don't even see it. There you go. Sort of like a rubber bung sort of thing. So it's almost like it's um, it's decoupling the vibrations from the mechanism um, from reaching the case too much. So I think we're on the right track. Okay. Looks like something's come loose inside there. Now there was a trick to this. I don't know whether I... I remember on the inside there was like these spring clip things. Um, don't know if this nameplate's going to reveal anything exciting. Hey, there we go. Bit of sound deadening on that as well. And now we can sort of see some of the mechanism inside. Oh, I don't know if I was. <laughs> It just feels like the. I, I just seem to remember there were spring clips of some sort. Oh, I can see one here. Uh, I'll try and zoom you in. So you can see that little clip there. I think if I push that in, that will release this side of the machine without scratching anything. There we go. So I'm looking for this similar sort of thing over here, and I can see one uh, back here. There's another one there, so I'll unspring that. There we go. So perhaps I didn't have to take those screws out on the bottom. Just just to remove the lid. There we go. The lid comes off. More sound deadening inside there. Look at that. Look at those gears and cogs. Now I'm not going to pretend to know the first thing about how these things work. Um, if you check out John Wolf's site, I'll leave links in the description. Um, he's got excellent teardowns of a number of these machines, service guides um, and all those sort of things so if you're interested in this sort of stuff and the mechanism you, you should check out his website it's, it's really the best reference online for that sort of thing in fact I wonder if I should screw if I should leave it on its base or no it's coming out <laughs> okay so there's the base so you see these little rubber feet that's just the other side of the, um, the sort of isolation or the the vibration deadening just it basically this 
this unit here, the, the guts of the machine is, is sort of floating in the middle of the case on those rubber bumpers and things, just so that when you, you, know, you push that and it's got a fair vibration, you know, so it's um, just helping stop that from going to the outside world. So what I might do now is put the handles back on because then we can operate the machine and see how the mechanism works. Okay, so I've got all the handles back on now and we can sort of see the mechanism operate without the case on it. You can sort of see it's got all these like wheels for the digits and you can see it's counting up here. It's got all these cylinders and things. Um, but you can see this thing is just built so strong. It's really, really quite heavy. It's difficult to actually get uh, a view inside the machine as I'm operating it because it's just the chassis and there's so much stuff going on. Um, I might give it a go though. I might see if there's a better view maybe through the back of the machine and I can sort of operate some of the buttons and things and you can see the mechanisms working. So I've got you a view through the back of the machine here. You can see this is where the bell is. Um, you can sort of see into the mechanism. See the registers. So if I type in some numbers, one, two, four, five, seven, nine, Hit the divider, see it slides that across. Let enter that in. Now it registers. I want to divide by, I'll just say 24. Slide that across. So there it is, the FASA NTK mechanical calculator from 1957. Fascinating piece of kit. Uh, when I saw it, I had to buy it. It was, it was. I'd never seen one before, and it just caught my eye. And it's just really, uh, really interesting. So I hope you found it interesting too. Uh, I'll see you on the next video, guys. Cheers.